Hello and welcome to the Valorant Esports Recap. Today we are covering the FaZe Clan Valorant Invitational in North America. This tournament is a 16 team invitational with 12 invited teams and 4 teams who won an open qualifier to enter. The tournament started with a group stage featuring 4 groups of 4 teams played in a GSL format. This means each group played a mini best of three double elimination bracket with the top two teams of each group advancing to the playoff stage. This makes for a very competitive format with every team having two attempts at a best of three match before getting eliminated. When compared to EU, there is no dominant team like G2 Esports in NA. There are multiple favorites to win the tournament and many that contest them, making for very exciting matches and unexpected results. Group A followed expectations fairly well. Sentinels are riding the momentum of back-to-back -back tournament victories, including the last NA Ignition Series event. They are one of the biggest favorites to win this entire tournament and only lost a single map to Genji to comfortably top the group. Genji recovered from the tough loss and was able to eke out a close game three against Lemonade Stand to advance. Group B offered the most intense start to the tournament possible, with TSM facing qualifier team Bloom. A matchup that you would expect to be heavily TSM favored, but Bloom came out with fire. Despite Wardell dropping 30 kills and TSM outslaying Bloom 88 to 78 kills, Bloom was still able to take the first map 13 to 11, shocking nearly everyone. Fortunately for TSM, this wasn't a best of one, so they were able to recover and take the next two maps to win the series, but it was a real battle to start their tournament run. This rough start would continue as they fall to Cloud9 in a back and forth series, giving up first seed in the group and forcing them into an elimination match against the Renegades. But by this point, TSM had returned to form and was able to cleanly win the series and advance as the second seed. Neuro Theft activated, but they will get into this B site, but not before Dapper's going to stop them right at the front door. That's a triple. Looking so mighty Dapper. Slightly peeking out into the angle. It's now left to just two players, but the wraparound actually coming in from Sabrosa could be everything. Cutler just needs to buy for time, and that's exactly what he does. Now it's split between the players. Ooh. It's leak into the one versus one, and he's got to try and start that defusal, start getting that time ticking. In fact, he's just holding it all the way through. Sabrosa already tickle peeks. He doesn't realize he's just stuck the bomb, and I don't know how leak has managed to get away with that. It's done, Ryan, isn't it? It's done out here. Uh, not over till the fat lady sings with the fat lady, cute fat boy is uh, playing another game. Yeah, fat cute boy's playing another game. We're sticking with his best of three, regardless of how he goes, because this has been crazy. Seth gets the fourth kill. Insane game. TSM lose on Haven. TSM lose on Haven. Uh, I don't know. Against Bloom. Looks to try and push through, hoping to find some space, but it's Kaplan oh. and Roka again to combine. Cutler has managed to double back in, but Roka escapes. He's just trying to buy time. He's trying to burn down that clock as much as possible. The shot from the chair, oh. and he gets both. That is ridiculous from Roka. Group C played out about as standardly as Group A did. T1 advanced without dropping a map, and Envy advanced in the second seed after a close series against Complexity. By comparison, Group D played anything but standardly. A group many would call the Group of Death for this tournament, featuring tournament regulars, Immortals, and Hundred Thieves, alongside a newly revealed and much hyped FaZe Clan roster. Despite the hype, FaZe would fall 2-0 to qualifier team China win in their first series. Hundred Thieves would also fall to Immortals in the highest profile first round of the tournament. These two losses leading to a FaZe Clan versus a Hundred Thieves elimination match in the first round. Both teams had so much on the line. FaZe trying to prove themselves in their debut tournament and the tournament they were hosting. 100 Thieves trying to show any kind of improvement after a string of disappointing tournament finishes since their debut. After a close 2-1 finish, FaZe Clan was able to advance and earn a rematch against China Win, a match they were able to win and take the second seed to move on alongside Immortals. A result that left many wondering if it was time for 100 Thieves to make a roster change. It's not something that you see all that often uh, in comp play. Valiate, oh, the judge, oh, the judge. Baby Bay and Rockets ran right into the barrel of the beast, leaving only Rockets by himself on site with the op. It is winnable to an extent because both players are going to be on the inside of the red room. So this is actually doable here for Rockus. He just has to play around this, these boxes intelligently. You hear the reload, so you know exactly where he's going to be. It's just a matter of this 50-50 game of chicken 
that both players are going to be playing with one another. Tucking against the corner is going to be the smart play, and Rockus kills for him will give FaZe a sigh of relief for now. Valiate's on the outside, 30 HP. Rockus does manage to get on top there, but Valiate with just a frenzy does the job. And now they're just going to have to go in for this play. No other option. The shock dart is played. He's got to hold this thing oh, down, but he actually gets him. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Fell out and go over to the defensive side of the map. This is it for Hunter Thief. Rockus. Oh, Rockus. What a great shot there. Baby Bay got a little aggressive. Tried to go in for that pick. Ended up not working out for him. Rockus as well had to bail out with the tailwind. Did not die there. Had he died... This round maybe could be going for 100 Thieves, but Venerated keeps on putting together some shots. Corey at the back of the gong. He's going to be good for one. Rockus gets a kill outside, and FaZe Clan stay alive in this competition. 100 Thieves are eliminated. After groups, the tournament moved on to a double elimination best of three playoff bracket. Sentinels won 2-0 against FaZe Clan in the most one-sided quarterfinal. In the biggest upset of the quarterfinals, Envy closed out a 2-1 series against Cloud9. All eyes were on the TSM T1 quarterfinal. Since beta, these two have been hoisted as the best teams in Valorant before other teams like Cloud9, Sentinels, and Immortals arose to contest them. T1 were coming off a disappointing PAX Invitational and were looking to prove that they can maintain that top 2 form. Meanwhile, TSM has played consistently well across many tournaments, but they had a disappointing day one in this tournament, causing many to question if they could maintain their form. TSM would silence these questions by winning an intense 2-1 series, taking the final map in dominant fashion. A win off the back of Sabrosa and Wardell, dropping 60 plus kills each. The final quarterfinal saw Immortals take on Gen.G Esports. Even though Gen.G took a close map 2 in overtime, Immortals took both their victories in a completely dominating fashion to take the series 2-1 and move on to the semifinals. Here, Dapper just dancing around this and who's gonna stop Dapper? And even if Zachary manages to stop Dapper, he still has to worry about Sick. Sick is gonna be very weak though. Zachary does manage to get the kill. One player remaining, it's gonna be Sick. He slows him down and he's gonna wall him off. Oh, the Giga Chad, he goes in front of the fuse. Oh man, oh baby, this could be the round when he was pro so fake. Oh, but he lets go. For a moment, he lets go. He has it halfway. He finally gets it. Oh my goodness. Does he manage to get the defuse? Yes, he does. And FaZe have put a round on the board. That was a really nice play from C9. And now it is left all onto FNS. That definitely needs to be clipped in its own right. But maybe FNS can get one himself. He's got to try and find three more. This is not going to be an easy retake. But the rotation's still coming in for the remainder of the players. Technically, Relics is alone. But as I say that, Mitch comes into support. Nice first one for FNS. I think he realizes where they are. And he could actually just start defusing this. At least get it to halfway. The peak's going to be coming out. But it's waiting for it. Now FNS could just stick it. I don't know if they're going to get there in time. Vice coming around the corner. Goes with the pistol. And he's got that diffuser. This is unreal. But maybe these two players can actually bring it back as they are going to go pushing into this one. So far behind at this point, I can understand the attempt. But this crossfire should be deadly. Peek from one. Actually, Shinobi gets both. That never should have happened. Really and now there really is an opening in this round. They brought this back from a 2v5 down to just two. Another one coming up. Shinobi needs to finish his dinner and he'll get there in the end. The time, though, is ticking. He's going to start that defusal, just sticking it all the way through. He has to let go, and he hits the shot as well. Does he have enough time? I think he's just about got it. What a play from Shinobi. There's now four players just waiting on this site. There's even the teleport available. This is over. Surely the spray down comes in, but they do get two on the entry. They may not expect two more to be here as it is done. Envy are going to send C9 oh, down to the lower bracket. This pistol puts us 12-9. Which might happen. So they find one, but they'll mow down, mow down the rest that put in. Spike will go down for ACK, and at least they get that money in. Losers round one was played directly after the quarterfinals, so we're going to be going over these matches before moving on to the semifinals. FaZe versus Cloud9 started in a really unexpected way, with FaZe slamming Cloud9 13 to 3 on Haven. This loss did not discourage Cloud9 at all, though as they were able to win the next two maps 13 to 8. 
This may seem like a disappointing result for FaZe, but considering it's their first tournament after being officially formed just days before the event, you can't really say that it's that bad. 100% room for improvement, but they should be allowed that time before being too critical of their play. He's behind. He's sprinting in, but he hears footsteps. He's going to see one around the corner first. Sorry, bro. ADS seals the deal. One more. That's oh two. That's three. That's four. Corey now going to swing. Mitch waiting with the op. All Corey needs to do is play for time. And Mitch maybe wants to save the operator. But for Corey, he's already done his job. Now trying to retreat is Mitch. Corey with the swing. He gets tagged. Oh, Wall gonna be going up. And he's just gonna retreat. But it's the hot hand. There's the jump. And Corey oh, burns God. Mitch alive for the ace. Zachary clears up so much space. Doug's gonna follow up. Zachary will answer idea. back. Oh, no, bro. 1v3. Zachary, oh. can you do it? That's gonna be the jump out. Finds one. There's still three. another. Oh my God. That's three. Zachary, no way. Now it's the 1v1. Mitch on the opposite side. He That's will the shot. Oh, my no. oh, my goodness. Oh. He kills himself. They're in great positioning, but it's the members back to site that I'm worried about. So we'll see how this comes through. Mitch is already down. Now Relic is like, oh, I got to get back into the mix. And it's the advantage now for Faith. Resurrection comes through. Baby Bay with two. Tens back site behind the map, oh but he gets God. taken out. And it's not looking good here for Cloud9. Relic is now trying to chase yeah, down the yeah. off player. He's doing successfully. He's on his lonesome. That's oh, one. Oh, That's man. two. That's three. Relics, he's uh, the lane. Now that the hot hand, but he gets taken out eventually. No. And they still will land the defuse sign. And they're gonna have to start acting quick before the rotations come forward. And it's Zachary putting the first step and Zachary to fall. Tans dashing back and getting a headshot into Baby Bay. And they know the spike is there too. Only one to go oh. as Corey falls Enemy down. Kill. Oh, Darkest is gonna clutch it for the team. And Tans says no. The blitz storm to the face. 13 to 8 for Cloud9 as they eliminate Base Clan. The Gen G T1 match ended with a surprising upset as Gen G took both maps 13 to 10, eliminating T1 from the tournament. This is a devastating result for T1, causing many to question their motivation and chemistry. It's just going to come down to whether or not they can execute. It's going to be a heavy push on to B, and once again, it seems like Gen G plays this well. It's not going to be a push up mid. There was only going to be one yeah, as far as resources way. on the side of T1, and look at how they make the play. They get the wall up. Mikhail gets onto the back of the site. There's the showstopper. Not going to connect onto anyone except the giant ice wall. Brax is able to get one. Wind tries to come in from the top ropes and isn't able to do anything. Brax keeps the round alive as he gets four. One side, one left on the side of Gen G. And that's Guimon, the man himself. We've called him for heroics many a time in this tournament, but it's not happening here. Brax puts the team on his back with an ace and we're playing another round. Look at how heavily they're hunkered in. They refuse to let anyone work their way onto the site. I love how they're playing this defensively, but the time is running out. Skadoodle gets one and it doesn't matter. Effie's and Guimon send T1 home packing. The upper bracket semifinals played out completely standardly, with Sentinels winning their series against Envy 2-1 despite a good fight, and TSM completely outclassing Immortals in their series in a quick 2-0, 13-5 and 13-4. Every master they've played on this, it just hasn't particularly gone well for them. I want to say their current win rate on this is somewhere in the 40s currently. Some kills are starting to come through though. Zombs gets two, Zombs gets three. Zombs with four, Zombs with the ace. Get rid of it because you need to focus up and take this to an overtime if you're going to win this game. He's got to go for the shot here. Caboose is going to be deep inside of the site. That's fine one. It's going to be a kill against Sinatra. Huge as he's still going to be inside, but look out for sick though. And also another kill comes through. Caboose is gonna secure three kills and Caboose can actually bring them back. Oh no, no, he doesn't get through the TP room. And it's even worse because it's gonna be stuck inside of the room. They can't get in there. They Wait. need to get someone to actually wrap around. FNSO can still very much win this game. He has to fly. He has to fly inside. Or but once he gets it. that, he's gotta they go through the it. They gotta go for it. They get out. They gotta plant this one down. They don't have time. No. no, they don't have time. They don't have time. And it boils down to mere seconds between Sentinels and Envy. And Sentinels win 13-10. Just trying to clear out.
long B, but there is Hades to get one. Tagged up though, so they have the information of where he's going to be. Looking for the peak, he's not going to be able to find it. And now it's left on to Cutler, trying to hold the line. He sprays down two. This might just be possible after all. Our bald brother looking to try and hold on. And I think he might have done it just based off the time he has to get on that defusal. And I'm not sure it's going to be enough. It's going to be incredibly close. No, it's done. It is finished. It is Cutler with the one versus three and the spike to help him out. TSM, they take themselves a victory in dominant fashion. TSM and Sentinels would move on to face each other in the winner's finals, while Envy and IMT would take on Genji and Cloud9, respectively, in the lower bracket. Between Genji, Immortals, Envy, and Cloud9, only one team could move on to face the loser of TSM and Sentinels. After C9 barely secure the first win against Immortals in overtime, IMT would take the next two maps, eliminating the runner-up of the PAX Invitational. Genji would match IMT after a clean 2-0 win over Envy. Immortals then shocked a lot of people by stomping Genji 2-0, 13-6, and 13-4, locking them in for the lower bracket final. Like, really no ultimates that could help Genji with the exception of the rest to retake the site. So they do get that one. Wow. The flank comes through for Gangsta. They're getting two kills closer. From actually winning this one, one kill closer there. Only the brimstone or the brief remaining of GMD gets oh. collateral. Now it's a three versus one. Pushing him forward, two on the heaven side. They get the kill, they upset Genji, and they move on to the lower bracket finals. At this point in the tourney, it was clear that this was the big story of this event. The story of the TSM and Sentinels rivalry forming in North America. The two last faced off in the 30 Bombs Summer Cup just a week before this tournament, a match won by Sentinels 3-1. This rematch would cement these two at the top of North American Valorant. Map 1 started with TSM dominating the first half, 10 rounds to 2. Sentinels tried their best to claw back in, but TSM would close out the map 13-9. Cage is being... The double up trap get all... Oh! One down, that's disgusting. Over the arches, you'll find exactly what he's looking for. And the trades come through though. Sentinel's not done just yet, fighting back. The spike is down on the ground, it's being collected by Hazed. He's only got one teammate to work off of. It's all on sick right now. 1v2, there's the flick. Oh, that's not bad, is it? But Hazed has the trade and TSM will lock it down. They are gonna pick up a scent. Map two is where this series exploded. The two teams had completely even halves to force overtime. This overtime lasted for 10 additional rounds. It was clear both teams were pushed to their mechanical and strategical limits, with rounds coming down to a single decision or a single gunfight. TSM would eventually close out the map 18-16 to, to take the series and move on to the grand finals. This is quite possibly the single best map of professional Valorant so far. I encourage all of you to go back and watch this map in full. wonder what we're going to see in terms of the attempts that they have. Like, for example, again, Dapper's got a lot of value that he's carrying with that operator. There is pressure coming through, actually. You can see Dapper's actually going to take down some bros, but there's the <gasps> flash. It's about three kills happening whilst we were blind. Strowman getting the double there. Amazing stuff. Wardell from the high ground. Great shots knocking down Zombs and Sinatra quite easily. And... <laughs> It's just glorious every time. It just. I don't oh know what it is. My. Oh, that's just disgusting from Sinatra. If, look at the mini map. Look how fast the rotation is coming through every position. Garage, see along, spawn. Every single position is filled with sentinel players. And they're going to bring Sinatra in for a couple more. It'll be very difficult to hold this. Flash has come through. Great kill there on Sick from Hayes. Before he gets traded, Sinatra with another nice one through the cage. There's the ult as well. That's going to reveal all the positions here of these remaining TSM players. Oh, Sabrosa, he looks absolutely on for this one, pushing for. Oh no, Sabrosa! He's managed to get all four. That's incredible That's in there from him. Insane. That is absolutely that insane. Happen. They're trying to fake the B with the drone, and it's working. Oh my god, that's 200 IQ. That Seaside completely exposed and. This is pretty rough here for Sentinel. Oh, Sinatra. Sinatra, no! Oh, just when you thought that TSM had just an incredible advantage that wouldn't be recoverable. He's ulting color now, dude! 
This guy is just, it's like three, having three extra players on your team, Sinatra just kills everyone. He didn't even, he barely faced the side, Sean. To the seaside now, this is going to be very difficult. There's a real chance that they could be stopped here before they make it to a plant. Sabrosa makes his way forwards. There's a quick flashback. That could be absolutely massive here. Sabrosa plays around the corner with the boss, Sinatra jumping around. Finally, the trade comes through. They're on to Sabrosa and the smoke, the brim smoke on the garage position could just create something. But no, there it is. Finally, TSM edge it forwards. They clinch it. They've managed to defeat Sentinels. It looked like no one was going to win. The morning after this intense map, Sentinels had to face an on-fire Immortals in the lower bracket finals. I need you guys to understand that the intense map from last night is fresh in everybody's mind. And everybody was calling for a rematch. Everyone was ready to cement TSM versus Sentinels as the premier rivalry of Valorant Esports. Sentinels did not disappoint, taking the first map and clowning on IMT in the second map with a 9-3 attacking half on split, the most defense-sided map in the game, and closing out the series 2-0. And this flash, this flash is going to obliterate them if they come through this A-main. Oh my god. Go it's going to be disgusting, isn't it? Yeah, look at the stack there coming out of Sentinels. They... Oh! oh gangster! Fire How has he found that one? He had to be blinded. Shazam is good force all the way back. And a great rocket all the way down towards the bottom of A-ramp. Is also going to clear out these players. The sheriffs aren't finding the shots they need ultimately. It, he's, he's feeling it. it. It's the classic Sinatra... Though, but Som certainly can, taking down everybody on the site, leaving oh. Gangster precision from Gangster as we are used to. Creating a one versus two now. It's a very difficult spot here. Spotted one player, the Satchel's going up. The nerf to the Satchel's keeping Gangster alive, perhaps, as he picks up the Frag Sinatra. Very bold maneuver up the ropes, giving Gangster the 1v1. That's what he needed. And now the mind games here from Gangster. That dark cover is going to cause problems because his opponent could be absolutely anywhere. Yeah, this is so, so tough for Gangsta. Going down that rope, getting the spike, making noise. Ah, Zom's Perfect play closing Zoms. it out. What a match by Sentinels. TSM started this best of five series with a one map advantage for coming from the upper bracket. The series started with a bang as the two teams traded victories on each other's map pick. TSM chose Haven and lost. Sentinels chose Split and lost. This put TSM on match point 2-1 going into the fourth map. Luckily for us and the Sentinels, they were able to rise to the challenge, taking the fourth map comfortably 13-7 after a dominant first half. Here we go though, Spike is going to go down. Can TSM keep this one going? A headshot, now it's going to be left up to Shazam here. 1v2, one kill. Is this going to be for the game? As Shazam's dancing around the box and there you have it! Oh my goodness! We're going to a game five, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, there was only one way this series could end. One final map with everything on the line. TSM started off with a strong first half, but lost control in the second half, allowing Sentinels to reach tournament point 12 to eight. Not even this could shake TSM as they were able to take six straight rounds to force overtime, take the map, take the series and take the tournament. He uses that story, gets right in their face, and then is able to pick up at least one kill. Sabrosa there to help out, too. This is going to leave now <laughs> Zoms just with his head in a swivel. No real options for him. Sick. Alone. <gasps> Pops up behind him. Oh, man, he's waiting for it. He didn't see him. Oh, my goodness. He gets the kill. He's going to be in this one. Oh, goodness gracious. He's still dancing around. Oh, my goodness. Oh, <laughs> sick. Every time, and it looks like... It is going to Get be an way. eco round for TSM. So Sentinel should oh. be picking up a 12, but we do see the blades are going to be available and we know what Jet can do. He knows exactly where Wardell is going to be, but he's not going to be too focused on him until he needs to be. Oh, but he Wardell. actually should have been paying attention to him a lot sooner. And that is why these ultimates are so important because now they managed to get the A site. TSM right back in this one. Wardell is disgusting, and that is why it's so important to save those ultimates for the right time. Even with an eco round, they're still doing a job here. Retake's still available, though, and Showstopper is available for Sinatra, too. Oh, that's, that's a big kill. That's a big kill. And this nade's actually going to be big, too, because it's going to apply some damage to Wardell. 85. 
Here comes the showstopper, and it lands right on Wardell. This is now going to be a winnable opportunity here for Sentinel. They get the kill. This could be match point here. It's all going to come down to Cutler. Cutler with a sheriff. Does he have what it takes? Surely he does. He knows where they're going to be. Go. Taps one, goes in for the other one, but he's actually going to hold on to it, but he gets off of it. And Sick is the hero for this team. Does he get the defuse? Yes, he does. With point zero three remaining, Sentinels are at match point. Tournament point. This is going to be for all marbles now, but the nade's actually going to force back some attention. So Rosa waits this one out. He won't die because he will have that run it back, but Wardell is there. And kills the first opera. So Rosa again is the hero this team has been needing. And he steps up. Dapper gets slayed out in the outside. It's only going to be left up to the opera of Sentinels Shazam to try and pull something together. But ladies and gentlemen, in game five, we're going to overtime. Sam. All they need to do is win this attacking round to win this tournament. Sure, all they need to do. Oh, yeah. I make it sound easy, but <laughs> they did go for a little bit of showers control early just with Cypher to try and see if there's going to be any aggressive push. But you're going to need a lot of confidence and a lot of bravery to make any sort of aggro push down either showers or be long when you're in overtime. You've got Cypher trips everywhere right now just to try and deny any sort of flanks. But it's definitely going to be an A hit here. And Dapper has that camera again. They really have not had an answer to dealing with this camera. And here comes the push. And an immediate response there is going to give Zoms the first kill. First blood on Subrosa, which is big considering how much Subrosa has contributed to this team. And then Dapper playing around that. That smoke was so nicely done too because it gave him enough of a crack there. But it doesn't even matter because Hayes goes inside. He gets two headshots and he's going to get that spike down. Hayes just doing Hayes things yet again, stepping up at the right time. This man is an absolute beast. Oh no, oh no, the orbital strike forces him back. Okay, so now more delay, but they'll be back in here. They can heal, they will be fine, but it's a 2v3. Oh. Now it's gonna be a 1v1. It's just up to sick. He has been spectacular, but it's not gonna matter. Because Wardell gets the final shot and T S M are your phase Valorant Invitational Champions. <laughs> what a game. This tournament, more than any tournament thus far, has proven that the future of Valorant Esports is full of potential. A rivalry that is played at the highest competitive level and so many are hyped about has formed. These results are how esports are formed and begin to develop. Imagine a world where TSM or Sentinels can go to an international event and face G2 esports in some way. The thought alone is so exciting. Congratulations to TSM for winning the FaZe Clan Valorant Invitational. Thank you all for watching this video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.